Look, whenever there's conflict, whenever there's relational tension, I'm telling you, there's always, there's always a slice of the pie that goes to every person involved. Some may be bigger slices and some may be smaller slices. But unless your name is Jesus, or unless like when you're filling out the form for title, you put ST for saint, okay? Unless one of those two circumstances is you, then you get a slice of the pie as well. Again, maybe their slice is bigger. Maybe they're the majority of the pie. But what I'm saying is, is that there probably is a small slice that belongs to you as well. And I gotta be honest right here. I'm speaking generalizing. So you may be outside of this, but generally speaking, we as a society and as a culture, we don't like to accept blame. We don't like to accept personal accountability is not something that is highly regarded and valued today in the world. What is highly valued is find someone else to blame and there's always someone else to blame. You go to the restaurant, you burn your mouth on the coffee, who's at fault? The restaurant who sold you the coffee. They made it too hot. You, um, uh, your kid fails math class, whose fault is it? The teachers, the counselor, the principal, the governor, the president, like you can go work your way all the way up the corporate ladder. Okay. There's plenty of people to blame before you get to little junior who doesn't know how to read at age 12. Okay. There's plenty of people to blame before then. How about this one? You smoke three packs of cigarettes a day for all your life. You get lung cancer. Whose fault is it? The cigarette company's fault. I'm telling you, true story, true story. The church I served at before this, okay, you served at St. Mark's Church out in Fairfax. Big, huge parking lot. Huge parking lot. Probably 200 parking spots. Enormous parking lot. And then there were these light poles in the middle of the spots. The light poles, okay, huge things, concrete all around to bring light to the parking lot. Someone, parking lot was empty. There was probably like 10 cars. Someone pulled into the spot right in front of the light and they banged their car on the light. And they actually, I am not joking about this. They came to me and said, you should put something around the light so people see it. I'm like, it's a big light. The light is the thing. But that's how we are. That's how we're trained. That's how we are trained as a society. We're trained there's always someone to blame. It's always someone else's fault. The last person we look at is ourselves. I heard a story one time about a lady, a married woman, who woke up in the morning, she had herself a cup of coffee, and as she was drinking that coffee, it slipped out of her hand, it fell on the ground, it shattered, and it splashed coffee on her brand new white pants that she was wearing. She was wearing these new white pants, so she was so happy, and it splashed on there, and her first thought, this is her mouth, not mine, her first thought, this is all my husband's fault. <laughs> and she explains that in a split second, she did this in her head. What she said is, last night, my husband came home late. And because he came home late, we stayed up late. And because we stayed up late, I woke up tired. And because we woke up tired, I had to have a second cup of coffee. And it was the second cup is that broke. So it's all his fault that I spilled on my new white pants. In a millisecond. In a millisecond, she was able to blame her husband for her new white pants getting coffee on them. We stink at accountability. We stink at accepting blame and fault for ourselves. That's why our relationship hack for today. If you want to improve your relationships, especially those ones that are broken, if you want to have no regrets in life, if you want to strive for reconciliation, if you want to be like your heavenly father, relationship hack number two is I will own my slice of the blame pie. I will own my slice of the blame pie. Say it with me. I will own my slice of the blame pie. Last week, we talked about how we will come back to, not get back out. Come back to, not get back out. Well, the best way to start coming back to a relationship is by owning my slice of the blame pie. We're going to look at a passage today from Scripture where Jesus institutes this principle, this important concept. And I'm telling you, right off the bat, as I said a minute ago, this is transformational. What we're going to talk about today, if we can do it. Like, I, don't, I always hesitate to say, I guarantee, because I don't want to say I guarantee, but I'm telling you, I guarantee that if you are willing to do this, and this is going to be hard, but I guarantee you that it will have an impact and change the trajectory of all your relationships, because it's that transformative. And because it's so transformative, Jesus gave us a very memorable analogy to show us about the power of accepting my slice of the blame pie. 
And it's actually a concept, like I know there's some people here who may have never read the Bible, okay? But there's things that we hear about in our culture that just common knowledge that people don't realize actually comes from the Bible. And this is one of those things that even people who never read the Bible understand this. And before Jesus gives us the concept, he starts by asking a question to his disciples. And we here are his disciples. So we're going to have this as a discussion between Jesus and us. He's going to ask us the most annoying question that Jesus could ask. The most annoying question. So annoying. Actually, let me go. I'll, I'll, let me say it as I, I want to say it. An insensitive question. An offensive question. Question. Like if it was anyone else, Jesus gets a pass because he's Jesus. Like son of God, water on into wine. Like he, he gets a pass. But if anyone else asked us the question that Jesus is about to ask us, we would be highly offended. And we would say insensitive and intolerant and doesn't understand. We would say all kinds of stuff. But Jesus, look what he says. In a series, okay, he's about to say this too. In a series, we're talking about relationships that are broken. Well, we're talking about heavy emotional stuff, frustrations, hurts, betrayals, okay, anger in a series with all that, like that's the backdrop where Jesus comes to you and says, Matthew 7, 3, he says, why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Here we are, we're talking relationships and we're bringing up stuff and we remember what they did to us. We remember what she said about me. And we remember all that. And Jesus comes and says, my heart goes out to you. But why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye and do not consider the plank in your own eye? To which we would respond, are you kidding? Like, are you, are you joking, Jesus? Like, ha ha? Like, are you serious? Like, did you just show up on the scene, Jesus? Like, I thought you're supposed to be all knowing, Jesus. I thought you're supposed to know what really actually happened here. Because if you did, if you actually knew, you wouldn't ask the question like this. So because you're Jesus, again, you get a pass, you're Jesus. But let me fill you in on what actually happened that maybe you were asleep or like parting the Red Sea or something like that, that you happened to miss. Number one, <laughs> my brother does not have a speck in their eye. My brother has something much bigger than a speck because my brother stinks. They're bad. They're no good. They talked bad about me. They ruined my career. They ruined my reputation. She stole my boyfriend. He got me in trouble with my wife. Like they're bad news, Jesus. So I get it like the whole like spec thing, but just, just to correct your analogy to be, you know, like I'm fact checking you, okay? My brother actually doesn't have a speck in their eye. They got something much bigger. And number two, since we're fact checking, I don't have a blank in my eye. You're way off on that one. Because I'm the good guy in the story. They're the bad guy. I'm the good guy. They're the plank. I'm the speck. I get it. Like you, you deal with lots of people, so you may have confused it. But let's get this straight, Jesus. They're the bad. I'm the good. They're the plank. I'm the speck. And even my speck, it's not even really. My speck is just a reaction to their plank. So if they didn't plank in the first place, I wouldn't have specked in the second place. But you know what? Just get the order right, Jesus. We good? Right, Jesus? We're good? And Jesus hears everything that you said and completely ignores you and goes on to verse four. He says, how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye? And look, a plank is in your own eye. <laughs> Do you see what he's saying here? Saying, I just, I've got a question for you. I heard what you just said, but how is it you're so focused on what they did, you don't see what you did? And Jesus is like, are you serious? Like now he's asking us, like, are you for real? Like, are you for real? Like you're focused on the spec, but you don't see the plank? Like all you're thinking is they're bad. If only they'd listen to me, I could fix them. That's what you're thinking. They're closed minded. They don't listen. I'm willing to forgive. I'm open minded. I'm willing to see things the right way, but they just don't. But you know what? If they would listen to me, I can fix them. That's what we think, right? Like all of us think that we don't admit it, but we say that. And Jesus looks at us and says, 
You're not actually thinking that, are you? You're not actually thinking that like all the problem is them and nothing is you. Like, are you serious? To which we would respond, that's 100% what we're thinking. You nailed, you nailed it on the head there, Jesus. Because in our minds, they're stubborn. This is just, in our minds, they're stubborn, they're closed-minded, they're not willing to see their own mistake. And Jesus is like, are you serious? That's why I like what he says right here. He says, how can you say, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, a plank is in your own eye. The word look right there, other translations would say like, and uh, look up, they'd say, let, let me remove the speck from your eye and behold, a plank is in your own eye. Meaning like, big news, surprise, shock. So let me show you like this, I, I would call it the 2022 version of how this verse would work. How can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your own eye and what do you know? And what do you know? A blank is in your own eye. And looky there. And how about that? That's what Jesus is saying is, how can you be so focused and so sure of their, they refuse to see their own fault. They refuse to take responsibility. They refuse to apologize. Unlike me. And looky there. You have a plank in your own eye. And then Jesus as like I said, only Jesus could get away with being so offensive and no one actually got offended. You know why no one got offended with Jesus? Well, people did. But you know why we don't get offended when Jesus says it? Because we know he's 100% right. And Jesus then, based on this, based on how can you be so focused on they need to and you're not willing to see your own, he makes the logical conclusion from this. And he does it in one word. And this one word, I'm going to say it. And if, again, anyone other than Jesus said it offended. How could he? Doesn't he understand? But Jesus says it and he summarizes it all. And I know this word is a very emotionally charged word and it's a very offensive word, but Jesus summarized it. If that's the case, you're focused on their fault, not your own. Willing to see their mistake, not willing to see your own. Hypocrite. Hypocrite. I'm not calling you a hypocrite. I ain't that dumb. But Jesus says, if you're only willing to see the faults of others and ignore your own, one plus one equal two. That's the definition of what a hypocrite is.